We'll now show that a triple integral normally used to find a hypervolume can be used to find the volume of a three-dimensional solid. Now let's remember that we've used this idea with double integrals over a domain region D. We can find the two-dimensional area of this domain region if we consider the ceiling function above it to be a flat plane. The z is equal to one plane. So now in this double integral that does give us the volume, of this solid, the volume of the solid length width times height, well when the height is one, the volume of the solid is the same as the area of the floor. And this happens when our height is equal to one. So we can use this same concept flown up a dimension. When we have a three dimensional domain, this triple integral will normally give us a hypervolume, but that hypervolume is going to be the same as the volume of that three dimensional solid when we have a ceiling function in four dimensions that is equal to one. Of course, we can't draw the ceiling function in four dimensions in the same way that we can draw the ceiling function in three dimensions, but that same concept does hold true, and that's what we're going to use. So anytime we're asked to use a triple integral to find the volume, we know that the volume of that three-dimensional domain region is going to be calculated by using the ceiling function positive one. So our first task is going to be to draw this three-dimensional domain region and then decide on the order of integration and the limits of integration. So we'll begin with y is equal to x squared. That's a parabola in the xy plane that is opening in the direction of y. It's missing the z variable, so it's going to be extended up in the direction of z, which turns it into a parabolic cylinder. We're also going to have the xy plane as a lower boundary, and the plane z is equal to 4 as an upper boundary, and y is equal to 9. These are all planes, so let's start with that. The y is equal to 9 plane is out here, and this is going to be extended infinitely in the direction of x and in z. But remember, this was y is equal to x squared a parabola, so that's going to come up and meet this y is equal to 9 plane. And that y is equal to 9 plane essentially chops off that parabola, preventing it from going any farther. And since our parabolic cylinder extends in the direction of z all the way up to the z value 4, we end up with this portion of our parabolic cylinder. This vertex point up here is going to be 0, 0, 4. And out here, when y is equal to 9, that's going to happen when x is equal to plus or minus 3. So we have 3, 9, 0, and negative 3, 9, 0 in the floor. And then the corresponding order triples up at the elevation of 4. So now it's time to think about our order of integration and our limits of integration. We do actually have several options here because of the shape of this domain region, but let's think of our rectangular solid, and initially z seems like a pretty easy direction. So we've got the lower limit of z is equal to zero, and an upper limit of z is equal to four. So let's begin with the dz iteration, and those limits are gonna be from zero to four. So now let's consider the projection of this solid into the plane of the other two variables, which is in the xy plane. And the projection in the xy plane is this parabola. And we'll think about the floating rectangle now in the parabola. Now do we want to integrate with respect to y first or with respect to x first for this next iteration? Let's take a look at what happens if we try to integrate with respect to x first our upper and lower limits are the same function, y is equal to x squared. We can't have the same function as both the upper and the lower limit. The integral would collapse if we did that. What we could do is go x is equal to 0 over to the curve and then double that. That would work, but only because the ceiling function is the same height throughout the entire region. If we had a ceiling function that was higher on one side than the other, then the volume underneath that ceiling isn't the same all the way throughout, and we wouldn't be able to double any portion of it. But in this particular case, because we have a flat ceiling, that would work. However, my tendency is to just avoid doubling because of the fact that it doesn't always work. If I can do something else, I'm going to choose to do something else. So instead, let's integrate with respect to y next. And that would take me from the curve y is equal to x squared. It's okay to have x's in the limits of an integrand 
if we're not integrating with respect to x. And then the upper limit for the y value would be the y value 9. Now that gives me the volumes of everybody above this band and I'll float the band far left. When my band is at its extreme left value, we have an x value of negative 3. And then when the band is at its extreme right value, we have an x value of positive 3. And now we're ready to integrate. So the first iteration is the integral from 0 to 4 of 1 dz. The integral of 1 is z evaluated from 0 to 4 is going to give me just 4. So that becomes the integrand of our second iteration evaluated with respect to y with the limits of integration from x squared to 9. The antiderivative of 4 with respect to y is going to be just 4y. Evaluate that from x squared to 9. So let's pull out the 4 plug in 9 for the y and then x squared for the y. So we'll get 36 minus 4x squared. Our third iteration is integrated with respect to x from negative 3 to 3. And 36 minus 4x squared is that integrand. Evaluated with respect to x, we get 36x minus 4 thirds x cubed. Evaluated from negative 3 to 3. So let's plug in our upper limit of 3 and then subtract from that our lower limit of negative 3 plugged in. And after we simplify, we get 144. And this is the volume of that region, so let's call it units cubed. 